With a pivot table and slices, we can create a balance sheet that's interactive. Now I've created one here, and what I've got in there are four different pivot tables. I've got two graphs that are connected, and also some metrics up here. And then with the slicer, once I make a change, the metrics change, the graph changes, and so do the pivot tables. So I can see my different status as at every month. So you can see you can do some pretty powerful reports and it's not that hard. I will show you in the next couple of minutes how to do this. So the first thing you need to do is when you're creating a dashboard or a interactive slicer with charts, you've got to make sure that you set out your canvas and then separate it into different areas. So on the top here, we're gonna put in there the slices and then second, we're gonna put the metrics. At the bottom, we're gonna have the graphs and, and down here, we're gonna have our pivot tables. Okay, let's go on to our data and we have our data here, which has the months and we have the years for 2014 only and we have our balance sheet items into current assets, current liabilities, and non-current assets and non-current liabilities. And the type here, we have the different types of assets and liabilities as you find in a normal accounting business structure. And press OK, and we have the actual amounts there. So from in here, we can create a pivot table. Go to Insert, Pivot Table, and Existing Worksheet. And let's put it in here and press OK. So we're going to drop in our balance sheet into the row labels and type into the row labels. So you can see it's like this. Now we'll make some space here so we can fit it in. Now from in here, make sure that under options and options, the auto fit column is switched off and the design subtotals do not show subtotals. And then the field headers, we can get rid of them. And also the no buttons. Now one thing we're going to drop in are the actuals into the values area. Now from in here, we can actually get rid of that and then just press a space. So it recognizes that as a character and it's a workaround to having a blank header. In the grand total, we're going to change that to total current assets and press enter and that's fine. Now let's go back to our values and we can put in there the dollar signs into the number format. Let's go to currency and choose dollar signs with a negative red and zero decimal places and press OK there. Now we can filter this just for the assets. So when we go into the balance sheet, we can just select current assets and press OK. So it just gives us the current assets. And in the design, we can choose this one in there. Now we can click and go to options and select entire pivot table and press control copy. And in there, press control V. We've pasted the similar format in here. So we don't have to go and redo all the formatting again. So the only thing now is instead of the balance type being assets, we can just choose current liabilities and that changes there. Now let's do the same for the non-current assets. So again, click there, select and type pivot table, control copy, and down here, press control V and we can do the same thing there. Okay, so let's click in the non-current assets. Let's change that to select the non-current assets. And in here, let's select to include the non-current liabilities. Now let's delete this space here. And then in here, we can just highlight it and put in a light gray. And the total assets, let's do the sum, which is current assets plus the total current assets. Now we get a get pivot data, so let's escape out of that. Let's click in a pivot table, go to options, and from the drop down option, let's get rid of get pivot data, because we don't want that. Once again, let's click in there. 
and then we'll do the same thing for the liabilities. So we have our pivot tables there for the assets and the liabilities. We can actually highlight all of this and choose a different font if you like. Okay, so the next step now is going to put the ratios there. So the current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. The quick ratio is the current assets minus the inventory divided by the current liabilities. So we get that minus the inventory and then divided by the current liabilities. Now the debt equity ratio equals the total liabilities divided by the owner's equity. So let's go to the total liabilities there and divide it by the owner's equity. And the owner's equity is simply total assets minus total liabilities. So total assets minus total liabilities. So we have our numbers there. And in here we can just adjust it if you like. Now, one thing I noticed here that we didn't change the names for the grand totals here. So here it should be total on current assets. Here should be total current liabilities. And in here, total non-current liabilities. The next thing is to put in here the charts that relate to the total liabilities. So let's highlight total liabilities and the amount there and go to insert and bar chart and we can include that in there. So let's just do it in here for the moment. We can get rid of the titles there and then the grid lines. Let's make this a little bit bigger and then highlight that and get rid of it. So let's click in our bar chart and press control one and then from in here we can go to fill and pattern fill and then choose this format there and then we can choose a red color and then let's click outside of the border there and then the border color have no line as well now from the x-axis click on that press control one Maximum, you can leave it as automatic, but we're going to put it into maximum of 1 million. And the major unit will be 200,000. Display units, we're going to put that in hundreds. And then the minor tick mark will have that cross. We'll show display units on label chart, that's fine. And press OK. And finally, let's make this in grey colour and this as well. So we've created the chart, and we can just make it a little bit smaller or bigger, just depending on the size there. So we're gonna do the same thing for the other chart. So instead of going through the same process, we're gonna save this chart. So go to design, save template as. Now when you do that, it goes to the Microsoft templates and charts, and we're gonna call it in the interactive balance sheet. So let's create the other chart. Let's click on the total assets and go to insert and bar and bar. And we have that there. So let's go to the change chart type from the templates. Let's hover over here and go on to our interactive balance sheet and press OK. Now we're going to change this to a green color and also it's going to go from right to left as well. Let's click in the chart, press Control 1 and then the Fill is going to be a green color. Now let's click in here and the values are going to be in reverse order and press OK. One thing I noticed is that we have 100. Now let's click in here and press Control 1 and we change it to thousands. And the same thing for that. Let's click in the x axis and change that to thousands. OK. So now we can put the charts in our dashboard and we can reduce it like this just to make it fit and we can change that later on. Okay, now the same thing for this. We can just put it in there 
Okay, now one thing is that background should be gray, so click there and then put in the light gray background. Click in the graph, press F4 to repeat. The same thing in there, press F4 to repeat. And we have our chart in there. The final thing we need to do is put in that array slicer so we can control the months. So click anywhere in the pivot table, go to options and insert a slicer and let's choose month and press OK. And from in here, we can put it into six columns. We can drag it across like that. Right click, slicer settings, get rid of the display header. Now, Let's choose the custom slicer, which I created earlier called John's Wigger Slicer. And we can reduce it like this, or we can just make the buttons a little bit bigger. So we can fit in there. So that's fine in there. Now, one thing we need to do is connect the slicer to the four different pivot tables. So now click on the slicer there, right click and pivot table connections and just check all the boxes. So we're connecting all the pivot tables to the slicer and press OK. So now we press January, the pivot tables change, the totals update and so do our metrics. So we have our live and interactive dashboard. You can see at any time how your business is doing, which is a pretty powerful tool to use but it is pretty easy to create this once you know how to use pivot tables, slices, and a couple of charts. And by going through this course, you're gonna find out how to do all this stuff here. And it's not that hard. It looks pretty fascinating. Use the pivot table principles and some common sense. Then you can create a dashboard just like this.